welcome to Mentally Stronger, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strength and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Melly O'Brien, co-founder of mindfulness.com and creator of mindfulness-based mental strength training. I'm so glad to have you with me. Let's dive in to today's episode. This is the 30th episode of this podcast, and I have to say I'm really enjoying being able to share tips and techniques and tools for helping you to stay strong in everyday life. And I really am appreciating the feedback that I'm getting from so many of the listeners. I am so glad that you're finding this helpful And uh, yeah, the intention behind this podcast is to really give you a place you can come every week to take one small practical evidence-based tip that's really going to help you to, you know, move the needle on feeling strong, feeling resilient, feeling happier and healthier and more balanced in everyday life. And, you know, uh, today's episode is one that's really dear to my heart. My methodology, my, my approach to mental strength is twofold. I blend cutting edge evidence-based and practical tools that I've learned over the years. Some of them come from positive neuroplasticity training, stress reduction tactics from peak performance psychology and mindfulness training and all kinds of really amazing tools that we have to enhance our mental strength. But that's also blended with the world's wisdom teachings. And today I want to talk to you about a subject that if I'm really honest, over the years more and more I've come to see lies at the heart of a lot of the loss of our mental strength. I want to talk to you today about our inherent interconnectedness with nature and all of life and how when we get disconnected, from that awareness, we start to experience all kinds of mental struggles. So I'm going to start with just saying, you know, as we go about our daily life, we really tend to be very narrowly focused on what's happening in our life. So we, t- we tend to focus on our responsibilities, our to-do lists, our goals. We tend to be very busy. Uh, but beneath how our full calendars and our long to-do lists, beneath all of that activity on the surface of our lives, there is a connection to the rhythm and the pulse of nature itself. Now, we have such a strong tendency in the human mind to feel like there's this sense of like there's nature And then there's us, like we are separate from nature. But in reality, we we actually are nature. We are a part of an interconnected, unfolding web of life. In the words of author and philosopher Alan Watts, we do not come into this world. We come out of it as leaves come out of a tree, as waves come out of the ocean, the universe, he says, peoples. (laughs) Every single individual is an expression of the entire realm of nature, a unique action, if you will, of the total universe. In his lectures, Alan also used to give the example of our interconnectedness with a metaphor. Let's say you have a tree in the garden and every summer it produces apples. And we call that an apple tree because the tree, apples, (laughs) that's what it does. All right, now here in this solar system, inside this galaxy, one of the peculiarities of this particular solar system is that it has this one planet, planet Earth, and the thing, (laughs) peoples in the same way that an apple tree apples, right? So if a million years ago somebody came from another galaxy in a flying saucer and they had a look at this solar system and they looked over 
planet Earth. And they just kind of shrugged their shoulders and said, ah, it's just a bunch of rocks. But then if they went away and they came back a million years later and they came and they looked around, they would realize, oh, well, we thought it was just a bunch of rocks, but look, it's peopling. It's alive after all. You know, if you think about it in this analogy that Alan's talking about, in the same way that an apple is part of an apple tree, it's not really a part of an apple tree. It is the apple tree. It's the fruit of the apple tree. We are the fruit of the earth. We are the eyes of planet earth. We are earth, right? Walking around on the surface with, with the fruit of it. This disconnection that we have is, is not common throughout human history. In fact, many other cultures before Western civilization took root really had a sense of nature being brothers and sisters, the rocks and the trees and the animals are their brothers and sisters. They had much more of a sense of connection with nature. But in the modern day, we have this sense of disconnection more than ever, and it's costing us a lot more than we realize because this sense of being divorced from nature also divorces us from a sense of our own belonging, from a sense of the sacredness and preciousness of life. And it causes us, I believe, to feel a kind of existential stress, like a, like a, a sense of meaninglessness and isolation in the world. Like humans are just have been born into this hostile, meaningless universe as an isolated fragment, you know, I think that causes us a lot of deep stress and feelings of loneliness and isolation. But the more we can remember that we are the earth, we are nature. And by extension of that, we are living part of the entire universe. The more I think we have a sense of belonging within it, trusting in it, flowing with it. And the more that we you know, tune into the rhythms and pulses within our own being and kind of honour them and work with them instead of pushing or fighting against them. And if we can really listen to and align ourselves with the unfolding of nature, both within and all around us, then we start to really understand, not just in an intellectual way, but in an embodied way, we start to understand that we are part of something so much larger than our individual selves and we find a greater sense of ease, wisdom and belonging in every part of our lives. So today I have a simple invitation for the week ahead and that is to just see if you can pause at least once a day, maybe just for a few moments, just to tune into the rhythms of your body your mind and the environment around you. Maybe that means feeling the breath in your body, the beating of your heart, the breeze moving, tuning into any sensations of tiredness or energy, hunger or satiation, warmth or cool, how you might want to respond to the living world around you. And just pausing in that moment to remember in that moment of sensing and breathing and feeling that you are not separate from the living world. You are nature unfolding. I hope this is beneficial for you. I know this is a little different to some of the practices I've given you before, but I think that you'll find if you practice this, you will find greater calm, greater presence, and a greater sense of belonging in your daily life. As always, thank you for your practice. Your practicing mental strength really is a gift that affects not only you, but ripples out into the world around you. We're wishing you well with this practice and I will see you on the next episode of Mentally Stronger. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength. And if you'd like some more support in becoming mentally strong, come over to the website and check out the different coaching and training options I have on offer there for you. 
You can find the links for all of that in the show notes. And thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong.